better. like you to take your Bible and open with me to the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, it's in the New Testament, and uh, it's uh, one of the overlooked books of the Bible, and uh, it carries with it a tremendous message, and uh, we're going to talk about Esau, a warning to the lost, and this can also be an application to the saved who may think they're saved, but may not be saved. So it's something that you ought to give at least 30 minutes of listening to and pay attention because God may speak to your heart. Now here in Hebrews chapter 12, it tells us in verse 16 through 17 these words. Uh, It tells us in verse 16, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person, uh, profane person as Esau, 
who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Now for those of you that may not have enough background to know about Esau, when Esau was a young man, he had the birthright of the patriarchs. But one day he was very hungry and uh, his brother came in, Jacob, and uh, he was willing to trade his birthright for basically a bowl of beans, lentils. Now I know soup beans and cornbread are awful hard to pass up, but to sell your birthright, he exaggerated it and he said, oh, I'm going to die of starvation. And we know that he lived in the house of Isaac, his father, and Jacob, and they would have had all kinds of things for him, but uh, he denied his birthright. And the Bible says that he was a fornicator. Now, a fornicator is, uh, this is not just a literal sense. This is a spiritual sense, too, because he committed spiritual adultery. And he committed, no doubt, adultery in the physical sense, but the real strength of what he did was to defile himself before God. And the Bible says in verse 17, For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited a blessing, he was rejected. Now notice that. Esau sought the blessing, though he gave it up, and the Bible says that he was rejected. Now who rejected him? God did. God rejected him because he took the blessing and honor of his birthright as something that was nothing at all. Do you know, my friend, that the very fact that you were born into this world, that God had a place and a purpose for you and your life is special because nobody else can be just like you. And God made you and created you for a reason. Now, sometimes young people struggle finding that reason. When I was a young man, I didn't know what my purpose was. I was just wandering aimlessly through life, trying whatever came along. And then Christ saved me and came into my life and gave me purpose. And the more I read His Word and the more I studied about God, the more He spoke to me about my life and gave me purpose and meaning. Without the Lord today... Uh, I could have very easily ended up in prison or dead or something even worse. Uh, I don't know, but God rescued me. Now he says, For he found no place of repentance. Now you know when a person uh, commits such a sin and they're a profane person and a, and a, a fornicator, and he sought repentance, but what does it say? Though he sought it carefully with tears. I mean, this man wept, he prayed, he tried to find repentance, and he could not. He was rejected. I'm going to have to take this coat off. I'm getting pretty hot. But, uh, you know, the Bible tells us that... Uh, Repentance is something that is offered to us right now. The Bible says that the day of salvation is now. If you hear His voice, harden not your heart. There was a famous philosopher. When he was a young man, he went to chapel services. Uh, he was about 19 years old, and he went to chapel services. And he heard the gospel. And he said that day he felt the Holy Spirit moving him and wooing him, but he rebelled and rejected. And there he was, he said, God, if you'll leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. And about 80-something years later, when he was dying, somebody asked him, 
do you want to be saved? And he said, me and God settled it long ago. I told him to leave me alone, and he has. And as far as we know, he died in his sins. Friend, don't you ever, ever tell God to leave you alone because he may do it and he may never touch you again. He may never speak to your heart. The morning I got saved in 1978, I believe I was on the very edge of life and death. I had already come that close to death on several occasions in car wrecks and all kinds of accidents motorcycle wreck that nearly killed me and God had spared my life and that morning when I heard the gospel and I, I heard how he died was buried and raised from the dead for me and that he loved me and I, God granted to me repentance and faith and I came to Jesus that morning and I've been serving Him and walking with Him. And He's been walking and, and blessing my heart for the last 43 years. And I thank God for His grace and mercy. He could have very easily passed me by and I would have been like Esau. The example of Esau given here illustrates the danger of men and women who reject Christ. The book of Genesis gives us the background of Esau. Jacob sawed pottage and Esau uh, came from the field and he was faint. And Esau said, Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that uh, same red pottage, for I am faint. And Jacob said, uh, sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, behold, I'm at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? And he sold his birthright uh, unto Jacob, Genesis 25, 29 through 33. Now the Bible warns us about uh, Esau despising his birthright. The Bible says that he was a man of the earth. He was a hairy man, had red hair. And he had hair all over. And, uh, but he was a man of the flesh and, and a hunter and a man of the world. He wasn't a spiritual man like Jacob was. And the Bible tells us some things about him. And I want us to briefly talk about that. First, we find that what he did when he sold his birthright, when he sold the blessing purchased by the blood of Christ and offered to him by the Savior, he thus lost his pardon for sin and peace of conscience and eternity with God in heaven. When you sell your soul, it is a dangerous thing. And you know, if you've ever watched some of the big movie stars, especially rock stars, many of them have admitted that when they got into rock music in order to be popular, they made a deal with the devil. And they sold themselves to the devil to do whatever it took for them to be famous. And from that day on, they lived like infidels, living in such wicked and ungodly ways, and they died in their sins unless God showed mercy upon them. Always remember that your life and your, 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 the value of who you are is important. You belong to God and He created you and made you. Today in our world, little babies are aborted left and right as if they don't even matter. And these women will stand up, these liberal women, and they'll cry out, Oh, it's sin against us to have to carry a baby. Why don't you stop and think about that little child that you get chopped up in your womb and sucked out in a vacuum? Think about the murder you just committed. That's the sin that God has said will bring judgment upon any nation. You want to know why America's in such a mess? We're under the judgment of God. 
And until there is righteousness, until we turn away from the ungodliness of sodomy and homosexuality and lesbianism, and we turn back to the right way, God will continue to judge this nation. And brothers and sisters, I may not live to see it, but I'm telling you that America, if she does not turn, is doomed. She's doomed. God will drop His hammer upon this nation and she will go into captivity and we will lose everything. You don't think it's possible? Look at some of the great nations in the past like Babylon and Persia and Russia and other great nations that rose to prominence. They all were destroyed. They fell. From within, the Roman Empire, which at one time was one of the greatest empires that ever existed, they controlled the known world. But because of the corruptness, the ungodliness, have you heard what the Russian soldiers are doing to little five and six year old girls? They're taking these little girls and raping them brutally and then killing them like they were an insect. This is what's happening in an ungodly world. And I'm telling you that soldiers ought to be men of integrity. A soldier that would do that should be taken out and shot because this is inhumane and ungodly. And God will not allow it to happen. You listen, Russia will feel the impact of what they're doing. And so will Ukraine if they're guilty in other ways. But I pray that God will bring His judgment soon. And I pray there will be a revival in America. Esau didn't want a revival. How do you feel about God? Do you love God? Do you want to see revival? Do you want to see things turn like... You know, when I was growing up as a boy, the world was a different place. Sixty-something years ago, when I was growing up in the mountains of Kentucky, you didn't have to lock your doors. You didn't hear about all the stuff that's going on today. You never heard about a child being molested. You, it just didn't happen. And yet today, it's so common in these big cities that it happens all around us ungodly people. What happens when we sell those things that are valuable? I want you to remember Jeremiah 49 8. It says, I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him. Esau's life was a calamity. Now I know we all have troubles. We have problems. Health issues. Things happen in life. But I want to tell you something. No matter how bad you've got it, one second in hell would cause you to say, Oh God, what have I done? Why did I wait? Why did I not turn to Christ? Why would I live in such an awful, ungodly way? And now I'm in this awful place called hell. And you know, the Bible tells us, Jesus said, all that call upon me, I shall in no wise cast out. All you have to do is humble your heart, repent, and by faith look to Jesus who died, was buried, and raised from the dead. Listen, study history. All through the thousands of years of history, there have never been a man like Jesus Christ. A man who caused the earth to shake when He died. And the graves were opened in Matthew. And they walked through the streets of Jerusalem. And at noontime, darkness covered the whole earth. And the centurion smote upon his breast. And he said, Never have I seen a man Die like this man, Jesus. And he had seen thousands of people die. But the thief on the cross, there were two thieves. 
And one denied him and one said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. Amen. And that's the way it will be for you if you look to Christ and you turn from sin and believe in your heart that he died for you. When you, uh, how do you sell those things that are precious? Well, like Esau, we may be unwilling to give up pleasures. I remember the morning I got saved, and I was crying, and I was under deep conviction. And you know what was put in my mind? Well, son, Tony, you play softball. You play basketball. You ride your horse. You go to horse shows. You're doing all these things. You can't, you can't give up that to go to church. And uh, I thought, Lord, you know, in my mind I'm thinking, well, do I have to give up all these things that I want to do and walk with you? And the Lord said, son, you walk with me and I'll take care of everything else. I felt that in my heart. He said, you just obey me. And that morning I went forward and I followed the Lord in baptism that following Sunday. And I remember telling my buddies, I'm not going to be playing on Wednesday or Sundays. I'm going to be in church. And they said, church? What in the world do you want to go to church for? And I said, I've gotten saved. And the Lord's changed my life. And there's no place I'd rather be. You see, listen, the church is the pillar and the ground of the truth. You're not going to find the truth anywhere else unless you find it in His kind of assembly. The world's not going to promote it. But we will in the house of God. Listen, as long as these doors are open, we'll stand for the truth and preach the gospel and preach the Bible just like it is, no matter what the circumstances may be. Now, a lot of people don't like that. They'd rather go to one of these easy believism, one of these social gatherings. But like I was telling some people last night, I invited to church, and they said, well, we might come. And I said, let me tell you, we don't just pussyfoot around. If you want to come and hear the word, then that's just a place for you. But if you want to play church, you might as well not even come because you're going to be taught the truth and the word of God is going to convict you. I believe if we don't get convicted for sin, when we go to the house of God, something's missing. That's right. If a preacher just gets up and tickles ears, and everybody goes out saying, wow, it's such a pretty day, and I'm so glad that the preacher just tickled my ears. That's not what a preacher's for. He's called of God to declare, thus saith the Lord. Now thank God for those of you that love Him and serve Him. And I'm not condemning you. You're, those of you that love Him and are faithful, you know how blessed you are. There's no greater blessing in the world. I've tried everything there is. Really, I have. I mean, as a young man, uh, I had the opportunity. People don't know this. I, I sang on the June Rollins show. How many remember June Rollins? The day I sung on the June Rollins show, Festus was there. And me and Festus sat in the dressing room for 30 minutes and he said, can you ride a horse? I said, son, I cut my teeth on riding horses. He said, you'd make a great cowboy out in L.A. He said, I'd get you in Western movies and all he gave me his phone number and address and he said, if you want to come, I'll even pay for your way. I told my mom and dad, and they said, we're not letting you go out there. And I said, I want to go. I was only like 15, but, uh, you know, I was ready to go because I wanted to see the world, and I wanted all this stuff. But God had another plan for me. God wanted me to do His will. I love baseball. I love basketball and sports like Nolan and Adam and different ones that love sports. I was recruited by the uh, Kansas City Royals and by the Cincinnati Reds. And I was headed for my tryout, and I was in a truck wreck and broke my neck and broke my arm and uh, didn't get to go. So I thought, Lord, 
you know, I, I would talk to God and I said, why, why couldn't I do that? He didn't even want me to try that. He had something else. And later down the line, when the Lord blessed my life, I met my wife, Kathy. And oh, what a blessing God gave me. It's such a godly, beautiful woman that is faithful. and She takes care of me now and helps me. What I'd do without her, I don't know. But I love her so much. We've been married all these years and we love each other more than ever before. That's because of God. Without Him, that would never happen. All of us who are here alive today, we're here because of the goodness of God. And the more we draw to Him, closer to Him, the better off we are. Esau turned away from all of that and he sold his soul. Jesus said, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul in Mark 8, 37? What will a man give in exchange for his soul? You know, would you say, like some people, uh, to the devil, if you'll give me uh, $10 million, I'll sell my soul. But I want to tell you something. You sell your soul and you've lost something more precious. For Jesus said, the whole world is not worth your soul. Every treasure, all the gold and silver, everything in the world cannot even compare to the value of your soul. You know why? You're going to live forever. That's right. Amen. When you die in this flesh, and we may not die, the Lord may rapture us out of here, but if we die, we're only going to be, it's just going to be like that, to be absent from the body. We're going to be present with the Lord, and we're going to dwell with Him forever and ever and ever. A million, billion years won't even begin. Perfect peace, no more pain, no more struggles, no more sorrow. But forever with the Lord, Paul said, he was in a strait betwixt two. He said, desiring to go and be with the Lord, but knowing that it's far better for you that I remain. But deep in his heart, he knew what awaited him. And tradition says when they led the apostle Paul to chop off his head with the executioner, that he sang hymns and that he praised God and that many of the court of the emperor were converted when they saw the faith of this man. What are the consequences of selling our soul? Afterwards, he would have inherited blessing, but he did not. Oh, how great and bitter will be the cry of the sinner in hell when it is forever too late to regain this loss Charles Haddon Spurgeon said when you go through the gates of hell you'll turn and look back and you may see a sign that says forever eternally lost in this place there's no escape you can't get out of hell you can't get away from the judgment. So now is the time. Today is the day of salvation. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Remember, Esau thought it, sought it carefully with tears in chapter 12, 17. So it will be someday, the Bible says in Matthew 25, you will cry, out to me, Lord, Lord. But you're going to hear the Lord say, you're shut out. Remember in Matthew 7, it says, many will come to me in that day, and they'll say, Lord, Lord, we've cast out devils, we've done many wonderful works in your name. And he says, I will say, depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. The Bible says in uh, 2 Peter 4.18, or 1 Peter 4.18, If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? What a serious thing it is to be alive right now. In this life, you are on a journey. 
that will one day take you to the end. And let me close with this poem. May you not lose the living Christ for one short sin today. With fond embrace, cling to a vice and throw your soul away. The gospel is for sin sick souls. Fornication, sexual pleasure, drugs, money, whatever it may be, fame and fortune that people seek after, none of it is worth what's going to happen in the end when you die without faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you today for your word. Pray that you'll bless it and use it in our lives. If there be someone today who's lost and you've dealt with their heart, may you give them the strength and courage to come forward and receive the Lord Jesus by faith, turning from sin and believing he died, was buried, and raised from the dead. If there's someone that's saved that needs scriptural baptism, we pray you might lead them to do that. Whatever it may be, Lord, may your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. I shine in